Carbon wheels are one of the best upgrades that you can make for a road or gravel bike, but I've always wanted to see how they're made. So when Okwo invited me to the Basque Country to do just that, well, couldn't say no, could I? The brand only started in 2020 with just six people, but now they're a world tour sponsoring brand. But today, all starts with this for me. So I'm actually here to meet Alvaro, who has invited me to make my own wheel set. You reckon I can do it? Welcome to the Basque Country. Thank you. <laughs> and let's see if you're able to do it. Uh, so this is where it all begins. I've got a bare hub body and we're gonna laser etch the logo onto this. And then we're gonna go and build the whole thing. We've got our etched hub. Uh, so this is the second part of the process. Um, and we are just putting the axle and the bearings in, the first two bearings. Um, and there's a special machine here. I offered to help, but um, I've, I've apparently broken too many bearings in my time uh, to be trusted with this machine. Uh, so, so Jon is gonna do it for us so that I don't muck it up. Perfect. So we've now got everything that we need to complete the build of this hub, which I think I might be, I might be okay to do. Yes. That wasn't a confident yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a crowd now, which means no pressure. And then that is the hub for my rear wheel. So uh, we are here in the assembly line. All the wheels are assembled by hand. Yeah. So here it's where we combine technology with uh, craftsmanship. Yes. And uh, all the machines here are designed and uh, building by us. And I guess uh, the first step is uh, putting some spokes in. The first step, correct, is the assembly uh, of the hub with the spokes. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if you're able to put it in. I don't think I'm going to speed up production today. I don't back myself. Christmas coming, Liam. I know, I know. So Liam, we are here now in the second step of the, yeah. of the process. Uh, the guys will, will, will help you because we have to finish uh, filming today. <laughs> I was taking too long, basically. First, we assembled the, the hubs with the, with the spokes and then we come here to mounting into the ring with semi-automatic tools that help the operator to, to build the, the, full, the full wheel structure and also to, uh, to have the first uh, tension part of the, of the process. So this is the third step of the, of the assembly process, the nipple adjustment and again a little bit more of uh, spoke tensioning. A mix of handwork and, and technology, and basically at this stage the operator rotates the wheel manually to make sure every nipple is uh, properly seated and, and adjusted, ensuring the perfect alignment before moving on with the, with the last step of the process. And now it's time for the very scary machine, which they've given me full control of, which honestly, I wouldn't trust me doing this, but I've been told, yes, and then I go, well, that wasn't so hard, um, but now the machine, well, it's very complicated. Alvaro, um, can you teach me how to use this complicated machine? So this machine is the last part of the process. Yep. Okay. Here we measure the, the roundness and the deviation of the, of the wheel, and it can be released until, until it meets our, our strict parameters. I think I remember how you do this. Again, Christmas is coming, no? No, no. <laughs> I think this is taking me too long and I would quite like to get out for a ride today. So I think I'm going to hand the tools back to someone who knows what they're doing uh, and we'll, we'll let them finish the job. It is crazy to see the speed that these guys work at, but with such precision detail it's absolute it's all like art really in a sense there is another step after this we need to take this into the next room well i've taped some wheels in my time i think this might be the easiest job i've ever done are you ready i 
Go on. Oh. Oh, and it heats it up as well. Done. So there is one more thing that I need to do before I can ride my wheels, and that is to see the stress testing, because obviously got a lot of watts now, you know, uh, so Peter is here to take us through what these stress tests are. And should we start with this one? I have a lot of roads just like this around me in Somerset. So for road bike industry standards, how many times, how many revolutions do you need to... The standards say the life of the wheel must be 750,000 cycles. Yep. One cycle is one impact with a the, step. The bar. Okay, cool. In, in, our, in our case, we do a lot more times. Yeah. More than 10 times. Wow, right, okay. So we're into the millions. Yes. So that's, that's me quite reassured that I can hit a few potholes. And over here, well, I'm very reassured now that I can spend my whole ride sprinting. Yes. And I'm going to be okay. Yeah. What, what is this test? This, this test is, a, we say, a sprint test. The objective of this test is check the quality of assembly the wheel okay because the assembly the tension of the spokes must be equal how long does this test go on for in in, the, in this case uh, we have uh, 1000 kilometers 1000 kilometers of sprinting yes sprint 1000 fair enough Oco also designs all of its rim shapes in-house and with two fellas here that know far more than me about designing rims. Does it start on the computer? Does it start as a kind of idea? Well, let's say this start with uh, some ideas, but especially with a benchmark or trying to uh, improve our sponsor rider's performance because we are in Oco fully performance driven. And the wheel is a system, is the rim, is the hub, is the, the spokes. And uh, we analyze everything, but especially in terms of aerodynamic, the rim has the uh, biggest impact in the wheel design. And a more stable product will keep the rider in this, permanently in this aero position. We saw the opportunity together, uh, going with the tires, we saw the opportunity to improve our crosswind mm. effect and also uh, it give, gave us the opportunity to improve the the thrust that could be created at 10 or 15 yaw angles. I see an absence of a hookless design. You're calling this the, the mini hook. What are the pros of this system, say over hookless? Uh, both the system, they have pros and constraints, and uh, but we decided to go with the mini hook because during our testings, we realized that uh, a rim with the hook gives you the opportunity to manage a wider range of tire pressures. For instance, with the hookless, because there is no hook that maintains the tire inside the rim, um, the pressure range is narrower. So we could start in 3.5, but maximum tire pressure is 5. Maximum pressure for a tubeless uh, system, it's going to be around 6.5. So you have that wide range to manage the different rider weights. Hookless, it could be an option. As it is in the mountain bike, because the pressure is really low. As it is on the gravel, because the pressures are lower, all the pressures are below 5 parts. But on road, with uh, 26, 28 or 30 C tires, pressures are mm, normally in some cases, mm. more than five. So it's difficult to really find the best efficiency with such a narrow tire pressure range. So we've got the 57 up here, yeah. which would be 57 millimeters deep. So these, you would say they're faster overall with the 50 wheels mm. that kind of suit road, but also gravel, but also your, your pros in the cobbled classics. Is it a bit slower than a wheel set like this? 
The RP50 is, uh, let's say, it's a uh, wheel based in performance, but at the same time needs to perform with a high strength mm -hmm. because it is supposed to be the wheel for the or gravel, stratos or cobblestone races. So we could go higher profile, but uh, we are compromising comfort and traction. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty important. So we reduce the, the high of the profile uh, 50 still is quite fast, yeah. obviously not that fast as a, a higher profile, uh, but is more comfortable. You have a better traction on the dirty roads or cobblestones, and uh, it's a super versatile, better strength and more resistant uh, rim. Alvaro, I've made a wheel. You have it here. Kind of. I didn't get much help, like I got a lot of help. Uh, can we go and ride now? Yeah, and now it's time to ride and to test them. Perfect, sunny day as well. Let's go. Armed with a set of the RA57 Limited wheels, I headed out into the Basque Hills for a spin. But with a wide choice of wheels, I had plans later in the day for a little gravel ride on Aqua's RP50s. So these wheels are pretty much what you'd go for if you're a road racer. And these ones, well, it's not a breath of wind out today, but these are meant to be really stable and actually make you faster in crosswinds. And we're now on the climb, if you couldn't tell, but these are only 1,460 odd grams, which means uh, I would say they're perfectly light enough to do climbing, especially this stuff, which rolls well, at quite nice speeds, but I've got more wheels to ride, so I'd best get going. The RA57 Limited wheels use a hooked design with a 23 millimeter internal width. Who knows, these hoops might have been a reason for Dali's late season success. Well, that and a lot of watts. If I'm honest, the, uh, the gentle Spanish climb that I was promised may not have materialized. Oh yeah, here you go. There's a road sign coming up that says two kilometers with the average gradient at 6.1%. After warming up my legs on the race wheels, I swapped over to the RP50 wheels, whose wider internal profile is ideal for the rougher surfaces of the back lanes. It's not just on the road that you can ride these wheels. You can also use them on the gravel. What helps is the 25 millimeter internal width, which means that these pair very nicely with the 45 millimeter tires. And where that's gonna really help is in these corners because you get the additional tire size for traction. I'm here with Juan Carlos, who is the head engineer here at Orco. Juan Carlos, you've been uh, a big driver behind having a specific hub from Orco. What's the reason for having your own hub? Mira, el desarrollo del buje ha sido algo para mí crucial porque desde el inicio de los tiempos eh, todos los bujes del mercado eh, pensábamos que eran mejorables. Mejorables, sobre todo, para nosotros, una de las premisas más importantes para un buje de competición, eh, lógicamente todos los profesionales están pensando en los vatios, en la fricción del buje, en la fricción de la rueda libre, y una de las cosas que hemos hecho es desarrollar un rodamiento que sea específico para el uso en una bicicleta. La mayoría de los rodamientos que nos encontramos en muchos bujes son rodamientos industriales que llevan una grasa demasiado espesa, que llevan unos sellos con demasiada fricción. Con esto conseguimos un rodamiento con esto y la precisión de mecanizado que conseguimos aquí en España, en el País Vasco, del alojamiento del rodamiento y la precisión del eje, conseguimos esa suavidad de rodadura que tanto buscan y que tanto ha gustado a los corredores, ¿no? como ha sido el caso del loto, que se han quedado realmente impresionados con lo, con lo suave que van las ruedas. ¿no? And then, moving past the bearings, uh, we've got what looks like a standard ratchet, but these guys have actually developed what you're calling the shark ratchet tech. Este es nuestro ratchet, nuestro ratchet de, 
con el sistema de Sharp Ratchet o aleta de tiburón, como puedes ver, en un ratchet convencional eh, la transmisión suele hacerse a través de un DIN, un DIN estándar que es como una pirámide con la cresta truncada. ¿no? Ese sistema, que es angular, eh, hay una pérdida de fuerzas que se van hacia el exterior del buje y en nuestro caso transmitimos siempre sobre una pared plana. Esa pared plana ejerce una presión mucho mejor, mucho más eficiente y tiene también una gran ventaja y es que el ratchet es igual, pero como ves, dentro del buje, un ratchet no se puede desplazar en el alojamiento del núcleo. Es decir, este ratchet no podría pasarse al núcleo y este ratchet no podría entrar en el alojamiento del cuerpo. Conseguimos una doble ventaja. Por otro lado, los 45 dientes que, como bien dices, que nos dan 8 grados de, de 8 grados, que creo que para una bicicleta de carretera corresponde y es ideal. ¿no? El acabado negro es un tratamiento cerámico. Es anticorrosión y a la vez antifricción. Porque de nada vale tener en un buje unos rodamientos que giren muy suaves y luego tienes una rueda libre que no va realmente suave y que tiene un exceso de fricción. Yo creo que esto es un punto disruptivo ¿no? Si al final hay muchas marcas que lo que hacen es comprar el buje, comprar la llanta y ensamblar. Nosotros queríamos llegar un paso por encima, queríamos tener el proceso completo. Lo más difícil es hacerlo tú mismo, pero cuando lo haces tú mismo tienes controlado el proceso totalmente y por supuesto controla la calidad. Hey. Oh, That was such a good day. I've ridden road, I've, I've ridden gravel. I've even managed to build a wheel set. How did I do? Have I got a job? You've done well, eh? Yeah. You've done well. If you like this video, then click on up here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Maybe with Aqua. Maybe. <laughs> Plans.